Speak your mind. It shall be done. What a beautiful morning. Agreed. Oh, good. You've returned. What news of the caravan from Cad Denival? If it is the anticipation of the coming winter that is driving their actions, or if it is something more. In any case, at least we can still retrieve the supplies, thanks to you. You've proven yourself to be quite capable. I'm glad you've decided to come along with us to Kaldahar. We still have preparations to make before we can depart for Kaldahar. Take this list of supplies to Pomarb's Emporium across town. While you're there, you might outfit yourselves with whatever gear you think you may need. Return here when you are packed and ready to go. What is it? How can I help? Your command? Of course. Of course. Can I help? It shall be done. At once. Agreed. It shall be done. There you are. All is set. The others are assembling as we speak. Are you ready to leave as well? So it was that the patchwork militia set off from East Haven, bound for the troubled village of Kaldahar, with the party of strangers in tow. On they traveled, across the windswept tundra of the day, through the foothills of the spine of the world, and upwards on the steep and treacherous trails of the Kaldahar Pass. Eager to seek out the evil that threatened the pass, they did not expect it to find them first. High upon the cliffs of the pass, a band of frost giants had prepared an ambush. Hurling boulders and dislodging massive outcroppings of rock and snow, the giants sparked an avalanche that thundered down the mountainside and crashed down upon the heads of the unsuspecting expedition. Those fortunate enough to survive the avalanche pulled themselves free of the mountain of snow and bodies that now barred the way back to East Haven. Battered and disheartened by the loss of their comrades, the survivors had little choice but to continue on to Kaldahar alone. It shall be done.
Speak your mind. How can I help? It shall be done. To victory. I'm here. Do you need something? You want whatever you say. What a beautiful morning. Ah! Hi! How can I help? Are you I'll ready take for me. Let's go, let's go, me? let's go! Onward. Your battle! Near. Your life is forfeit. Shall be done. Shall be done. He will smash your face. Very well.
Here we go! Oh, let's go, that. let's go, let's go! At once. Charge! To I'll try victory. to reach you. Uh, whoops. your mind. At once. Agreed. How can I help? It shall be done. Name your task. Yes, at once. Speak your mind. How can I help? It shall be done. Something amiss? Your command? How can I help? Agreed. God's grace. Hey, stay still! Are you ready for me? Uh, whoops. Forward. Yes, of course. The subtlety isn't your best quality. Speak your mind, of course. It shall be done. Very well. Fighting their way through the goblin-infested valley of the pass, 
the survivors of the doomed East Haven expedition at last came upon the small hamlet of Kaldahar. Nestled within the roots of a massive oak tree, the tiny cottages were a welcome sight for the weary travelers. As the party approached the town, a warm breeze blew over them, chasing away the chill of the frozen pass and carrying with it the sweet scent of cooking fires. How can I help? Agreed. At once. Your command? Yes. Onward. Forward. forward. Speak your mind. Onward. Of course. How can I help? It shall be done. Onward. Thank you. 
victory. Very well. Can I help? Agreed. It shall be done. It shall be done. Yes, forward. Very well. Hello. Okay. I'll take that off your hands. Speak your mind at once.
can I help? Very well. It shall be done. Speak your mind. Onward. Onward. How can I help? Your command? At once. It shall be done. It shall be done. Your command? Very well. Yes, at once. Speak your mind. How can I help? Onward. At once.
How can I help? Very well. Your command? Very well. Forward. Speak your mind. Agreed. Agreed. I'm here. How can I? Agreed. Yes? At once. some time now. <sighs> yes, well, bad news travels upon swift wings in these mountains. I know about your expedition from East Haven. I know why you are here, for it was I who sent for you. Yes, it was I who sent Hallister to East Haven for help. His death weighs heavily upon my conscience. For not only was he a student of mine, but he was also a friend and trusted companion. He will be missed, as will Rothgar and the other members of your expedition. Oh yes, I know. I also know that it was no accident. Someone or something did not want your party to reach Kaldahar alive. There are malevolent forces at work in these mountains. Forces that seek to undermine the delicate balance we druids have struggled to preserve for centuries. Oh, what did I could. The face of the evil remains hidden, but its presence is unmistakable. All about us, there are signs of its damaging influence on the balance. The unnatural weather, the recent rash of abductions, the numerous monster sightings in the pass. These all point towards something sinister. Even the animals sense something is amiss. The balance. It is what the druids of Kaldahar hold sacred and have worked to preserve for generations. It is all around us. It is us. Balance is the harmony that is achieved when man and nature learn to coexist no longer contending with one another, but coming together as two parts of a whole. Balance is the belief that this town is built upon, the very reason for its existence. Druids of Sylvanus, the Oak Father, have tended this shrine since the beginning. For hundreds of years, we have striven to achieve the ideal balance between man and nature. When settlers finally came to this pass, it was the Archdeward Tolben, my predecessor, who laid the foundation for the relationship that led to the birth of this community. The great oak, the massive tree that stands above us, around us, it is a holy shrine to Sylvanus, for it was he who planted its seed when Faerun was first born. It is a testament to the raw power of nature, a monument to its ability to thrive in the face of adversity. Thanks to Tolben, 
The great oak we druids called the Kaldahar and the town that has come to be known by the same name have together become a monument of even greater significance, a monument to the balance. Tolman was the catalyst for the transformation of the shrine from a sacred grove to a thriving community in which man and nature exist as one. At first, settlers were kept away from the site. The druids of old saw outsiders as an affront to the sanctity of the tree and its sphere of benign influence. They erected thorny brambles to keep intruders out and used their powers to frighten away the men and women that came to build homes in a place they felt was obviously so close to the gods. It wasn't until the succession of Archdruid Tolben that things changed. Unlike his predecessors, he believed that the settlement of the valley was not only inevitable, but it was actually the will of Sylvanus. He also believed that we had been wrong in keeping the settlers away, and that the Oak Father had intended people to share in the miracle of the Great Oak from the beginning. When Tolben finally became Archdruid, he formed a plan to fulfill the destiny of this sacred site by bringing about a union between the Great Oak Shrine and the settlers. It was this union that the Archdruid Tolben believed would achieve the harmony that we had been striving for for generations. The harmony between man and nature. As it stands, Kaldahar is a monument to this vision. The tree and town exist in a natural symbiosis where it is next to impossible to tell where one leaves off and the other begins. But now, the balance is threatened. I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? Oh, the weather in these mountains has always been harsh, but never like this. Fierce storms ravage the valley without warning, often lasting for several days at a time before vanishing as quickly as they come. It is barely midway into Leafall, and yet the pass to the south has been snowed in entirely. Weather such as this is most unnatural. Nature presents itself in cycles that are predictable by those who know what to look for. I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? Oh, yes. Terrible, terrible. At first, there were tales told by travelers of companions disappearing into the night, snatched up from their bedrolls as they camped along the narrow trail that winds through the pass. We did not think much of these tales, for such occurrences are not unheard of in these mountains. Then one night, Conlon's boy, Shemish, went missing. The next morning, the whole town searched for the boy, but turned up nothing. He was just gone, vanished without a trace. The boy was just the first. Several nights later, another disappeared, Megan Potts, the local midwife. Her husband, Khalil, was grief-stricken to the point of madness. With barely a word to anyone, he snatched up his sword and marched off into the darkness after his wife. No one has heard from him since. And now, the abductions are occurring more frequently. Aiden, the old innkeeper from the Evening Shade, was taken only three days ago. I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? As I'm sure you have noticed by now, there seems to be quite a few goblins about. It is not usual to see so many of their kind roaming the mountains so late in the year. It is almost as something as drawn them out of their holes, like carrion birds drawn to the scent of death. As if the goblins weren't enough, several giants have been spotted moving through the pass in groups as large as ten. That many giants traveling together in such numbers indicates they are organized and are acting with a singular purpose. I have watched their activities closely. Their tracks trace a deliberate pattern through the mountains, almost as if they were on patrol. Another thing, while I was out scouting the giants, I discovered other sets of tracks, tracks I have never encountered before. What manner of beast made them? I could not say. I fear that if we do not soon discover the source of these disturbances, then all that we have worked for will be destroyed. 
The evil that has come to these mountains infects this town like a disease. As its people suffer, so does the tree suffer from the sickness that attacks the balance, corrupting it with its very presence. Already, the circle of warmth that radiates from the great oak has begun to recede. We were forced to abandon the outlying farmsteads as a result of the shrine's fading power. If we do not take action soon, I am afraid that the life-giving warmth will cease altogether. Both the great oak and the town nestled within its roots will die. This must not happen. We need your help. I suggest you begin by investigating the Vale of Shadows. It is a place not far from here. Darkness has always clung to the floor of the small canyon, as if the light of the sun itself were wary of the place. There are a number of ancient crypts hidden within the shadows of the Vale's narrow cliff walls. There have been rumors of the dead awakening and emerging from their dusty tombs to walk once more amongst men. If these rumors are true, then I suspect that whatever is responsible for disturbing their slumber may be behind the other disturbances as well. Go to the Vale of Shadows, learn what you can about the happenings there, then return here and we shall discuss a course of action. Good luck and farewell. Speak your mind. Forward. Please, you must make haste. Time works against us. We must discover the source of this evil before the balance is altered irrevocably. Interesting. It is impossible to determine exactly what ails him without examining him myself. But I do know of an herbal remedy that may ease his suffering. If you like, I could tell you the recipe so that you may help him help himself. Tell him to gather a handful of frost berries that grow throughout these mountains. He must squeeze the juices from the berries into a pot of boiling tundra grass. Once mixed, the entire brew must be consumed in order for the pain to subside. How can I help? It shall be done at once. Me will smash your face! Forward. Your command at once. Forward. <laughs> 